Greg, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me, James. Greg, great financial quarter. Let's talk a bit about that. You reported earnings of nine cents per share. Yeah, we had a positive contribution this uh, this quarter of one, actually one cent per share in terms of total. But you know, it was the uh, first time in over a year that we've had a positive contribution, uh, really driven by a couple key things for us. One is we're seeing increased number of patients in terms of our. Uh, patient population continues to grow month over month, and mm -hmm. we surpassed 13,000 patients in the quarter. We've also seen significant improvements in our yields, and that's a big factor for us as a company. Uh, not only did we produce an in a premium indoor product, but we also are seeing a dramatic increase in our yields, okay. which is allowing our cost of goods to be reduced. Right, so your cost of goods is why the yields are important. Absolutely. So if you think of how you how cost of goods are calculated, right? It, the only there's only two ways that you can improve your cost of goods. One is to reduce your costs, and the other is to improve your yields because then you're offsetting your uh, what you're contributing against uh, the costs that go into the production. So we've actually are now seeing, and and we reported last month, uh, forward-looking projection changes in terms of what our production uh, expectations will be. So we're now uh, kind of the average that the standard looks at in the industry uh, is grams per square foot annually. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we are now basing a, at a kind of average standard of 400 grams per square foot annually, which is, to my understanding, one of the best in the industry. Absolutely. And with that, it's really had a big impact on our cost of goods because you're now allocating the labor and the input costs and everything else against a much more fulsome product at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. That's really interesting. So. What is the main reason that your yield per plant or yield per square foot has increased so much in the last year? That's yeah, a great question. So uh, part of it is our systematic approach. We've developed our own software called Organigrow, and oh. we actually use our, our own software to really measure everything we're doing with the plants. We treat each strain very differently. We focus in on terms of how that strain specifically, what the input materials are, how we manage it through its life cycle, um, and then what we, you know, we give it different nutrients. We actually treat each strain very differently. So that's one part of it is our systematic approach. And then, you know, as we go over time, continue to improve our three-level growing technology. I think that's one of the key differentiators for us is, you know, we're seeing improvements with that and we're getting the same yield on the upper left-hand side on the third level as we are on the lower right-hand side hmm. uh, on the bottom level. And that is a big part as well. So just consistency of plants and input materials and everything we do. Uh, and again, it's having a huge impact on our costs. So we're now seeing kind of a, a cash cost and an input cost based on labor and materials of just over a dollar per gram. Wow. Um, um, so, you know, even when you put depreciation and allocations against that, um, you're still well below $1.50 per gram. So, uh, big change for us as a company with a premium indoor product. Sure, and great implications for future profitability. Absolutely. So I think you know as we move into the adult recreational market um, and as competition grows in the space, one of the key aspects is not only what we're able to get as an average selling price, but what can we do in terms of costs. And uh, so having that offset of having a premium product at a very cost competitive pricing in terms of our production is going to be a big differentiator for us. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this has been the result of an obviously an ongoing sort of refocusing of all of the assets and, and the, the whole idea behind Organogram. I mean, it's really come 360 degrees since 2017. Um, what, is, uh, what, is, what is really going to drive profitability in the near future? What's your main sort of driver? Yeah, I think so. If we look ahead, I mean, we're, we're now starting to build up inventory for the adult recreational market, right? We've got agreements in place with New Brunswick and PEI. Uh, we're very active in the core Canadian markets, you know, Ontario, Alberta, Nova Scotia, other provinces to, to look to kind of position ourselves to, to have a significant product impact there. So building that inventory, when we see the launch of the adult rec market this summer at some point, um, we certainly are comfortable that we're going to have a sufficient fill. And that's one of the big factors in the space is our company is going to be able to contribute and have the product available uh, when the various liquor boards, whether or not they're the retailer or the wholesaler um, or the new cannabis boards, I guess as we call them, mm -hmm. uh, are looking for products. So that's going to be a big driver. But we're going to see continuous improvement as well as a company. Uh, you know, everything that we're doing is really about producing a premium quality product but we're looking at how do you improve efficiency. So we've put a lot of automation in, in terms of you know, packaging, waste destruction, potting, everything that we're doing. So again, that will help drive down costs. So mm -hmm. it's all about producing a premium product at a, at a very reasonable low cost, and that will help on a profitability perspective. Sure. Um, I want to ask you about the biological assets accounting because you gave me a fantastic answer before <laughs> we started to roll. It's the first logical explanation that I've heard in regards to biological assets accounting. And you explained to me that that was originally 
uh, came from the forestry industry. Well, if you think of how kind of IFRS and biological assets work, right, you've got to uh, attribute value to your product at part in its growth cycle. Um, because if in forestry, when you have a 50-year growth cycle, if you weren't doing it, Forest company, you know, forestry companies would never make money because they'd always be forward-looking so far in terms of their growth cycle. So it's been applied to various industries, including the cannabis industry, and that's important where we have to ascribe a value uh, to the plant and the product throughout its growth cycle and even once it's harvested before we actually sell it. There is an offset against sales, as you know, in terms of when you sell, uh, sell the product, but you do build a value because it is uh, a, a market-ready product at the end of the day when you're putting in inventory. So that's a key factor. Right, you bet. Okay, that's great. We'll leave it there for now. We'll come back to you in probably less than a quarter, <laughs> and uh, we'll continue the conversation. Congratulations on a great quarter, Greg. Thanks for coming in. Great. Thanks, James.